In this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to my newest course, uh, the newest course that's going to be on my website, and that's a course using Dagger 2 on Android. This course is meant to serve as a practical beginner's guide to using Dagger 2. It's going to be 100% free, and it's going to be available on my website. Uh, my website is conewithmitch.com for those of you who have never been there before. I'll just bring it up on the screen here so you can see it. Uh, all you got to do is go to codingwithmitch.com, go to press the login button up here. You can just create an account by going to register. It's completely free. All you got to do is fill this simple application out, no big deal. And then you can go to courses and the course will be listed there. Uh, as of right now, it's actually listed on the home page right here too. So there will be a link there that you could click. In the course, I'm going to be focusing heavily on practical examples and practical use cases. There's a lot of stuff on the internet about Dagger, a lot of blog posts, a lot of video stuff, but uh, not a lot of it uses, not a lot of it, of it focuses on Android specific use cases. And there's a lot of convenience classes that Dagger has for Android, so that's what I want to focus on. So here's, uh, here's some of the things that we're going to be taking a look at. Number one is the, uh, the Dagger Basics. This is what I call the, the fundamental Dagger classes. Things like Dagger Application, Dagger App Compat Activity, and Dagger Fragment classes. Uh, these are all new in Dagger 2 and they provide a lot of conveniences on Android. They are literally built for Dagger to be used on Android. Next is custom scopes and some other annotations like the at reusable annotation. Uh, the third thing is the three types of injection, constructor injection, field injection, and method injection. Those are the three different types of injection that you can use with Dagger. Uh, the at provides annotation and also declaring static methods with the at provides annotation. We have fragment injection, so that's how to inflate and manage fragments, inject fragments using Dagger. I'm also going to be using the new Jetpack Navigation Components library for helping us to manage the navigation of the app. So that's kind of like an added bonus that you're going to see in the course. Um, view model injection. So I, everybody knows that uh, whoever watches my videos knows that I like MVVM. I think MVVM is the best architecture. Obviously, view models go hand in hand with MVVM. So we're going to be using view models and we're going to be injecting view models uh, using Dagger. Uh, the repository pattern, so that uh, most MVVM architecture or proper ARM MVVM architecture contains a repository and uses something known as the repository pattern, for those of you who don't know. So we're going to be using that. We're going to have Retrofit 2 and also how to use Retrofit 2 with Dagger. So it's like making network requests and things like that. And as I said just, uh, just a minute ago, I'm going to be focusing very heavily on practical use cases and specifically practical use cases on Android. There's a ton of convenience classes for using Dagger on Android and I want to show you how to leverage those classes and use, it, use Dagger the way it's meant to be used on Android. Now before starting the course, I need to warn you. Don't confuse this with a beginner's course. This is a beginner's course, I guess, with respect to Dagger, but it's not a beginner's course with respect to Android development. I expect you to be familiar with quite a few things. You need to know MVVM architecture and the repository pattern. Well, technically you don't need to, you can get away with not knowing it, but you're definitely gonna be uh, at a disadvantage, I would say. Uh, you need to know Retrofit 2, the library Retrofit 2 for making HTTP requests, recycler views, fragments, Android X wouldn't be a bad thing. I'm going to be using Android X in the course. That's not a big deal. That's just different dependencies. Uh, singletons, so what a singleton is, why we create it, that kind of thing. Threading, general stuff about threading, uh, you know, doing work on the background thread, posting things to the main thread, that kind of stuff. And I'm even going to be throwing in some Rx Java to help with the HTTP requests. So there's quite a few things that you need to know. I definitely don't, I would not call this a beginner's course. So if you don't know some of those things, uh, you don't have any knowledge of some of the things that I just mentioned, I, uh, I'm going to give you some recommendations here for some courses and some videos that you can watch to bring you up to speed. And the, the first recommendation I have for you is my SQ Lite for Beginners 2019 course. So if you go to my website slash courses, uh, SQ Lite Room Persistence Android, this is a really great course for beginners. I, I built this for beginners. It helps you kind of get started with Android development, shows you the best practice way to use SQ Lite, which is a local database on the phone, and the Room Persistence library, which is how you interact with that database. You'll learn things like activities, recycler views, database interactions, all that kind of stuff how to create objects, what objects are even. It's a great beginner's course. So if you don't know anything, that's where you want to start. Uh, number two is my REST API with 
MVVM and Retrofit. So again, go to my courses page, REST API with MVVM Retrofit. This is gonna teach you the MVVM architecture that I've been talking about, Retrofit 2 for making HTTP requests, and also how to interact with a REST API on the internet. There's a lot of other things too in there, like if you scroll down, there's a ton of kind of topics here that I've mentioned. Uh, a lot of really fundamental skills. That would be the next one that you want to watch. And then after this, if you you uh, still want more, you want to watch the local database cache with the REST API course. This is a continuation of the previous one that I just mentioned, but it actually creates a local database cache of the data that you get from the, from the internet. So a really, really great course. You learn things like uh, architecture, network timeouts, dealing with slow network speeds, why to use room as opposed as opposed to retrofit caching you know tons of stuff there's a outline of all the things you'll learn here so definitely worth checking that out now if you're still not sure you want to learn dagger or not sure if it's worth your time investing your time to learn it um, i'm going to make another video after this one and provide some resources where you can learn more about dagger before you know diving into my course because as i said this is not going to be a beginner course so it might help you to have some resources to refer to to decide whether or not dagger is right for you um, hint, hint, yes, it's right for you. I think if you're going to be an Android developer, you're going to build an Android app, you should be using Dagger. Uh, there's other dependency injection frameworks, libraries, but Dagger is the popular one right now. If you want to get a job in Android development, you need to know Dagger. Um, and if you're just building an Android app for your startup or you're building it with an idea that you have, Dagger will help you. It's going to make your app work better, faster, easier to unit test. You should learn it. But anyway, next video, I'll talk about some resources where you can get more information on Dagger.